what we like to ask the respondents is very simple. What does this statement mean for you? Can you say a few words? How are you going to run with this statement? Or maybe walk? Or maybe sleep? Or whatever <laughs> you want to do with it. So please, may I start with Robert? Sure. I think, uh, I think uh, first of all, I think a big thank you is in the right place uh, to all participants for the creation of this uh, statement. Uh, which is actually a, a co-creation of heritage experts and water management professionals and in itself a concrete example of uh, cooperation between those various uh, sectors. And of course in particular to you, Henk and Ellen, for putting it so well together in the late hours or early hours, I should say. It's indeed uh, this kind of intersectoral approach which I think is needed. Keynote speakers on, on Wednesday outlined challenges uh, for such as increasing population growth and climate change. And um, others showed opportunities, particularly on the, during the workshops on, uh, on Thursday. Different perspectives are essential to find new innovative solutions. But what all these presentations on Wednesday and Thursday and even today had in common, I think, was what that all um, water challenges have a history, a cultural component, and that relates both to tangible and uh, intangible heritage. And these, in turn, provide opportunities for the future, again, both tangible and intangible. And that is what I think is so well reflected, Hank, in uh, the Amsterdam uh, statement read out by Ellen. Now, you might wonder, what is uh, UNESCO doing in all of this regarding the issues um, referred to in the statement. Um, of course, the, the UNESCO World Heritage Convention mentioned in the statement itself is the organization's maybe most well-known international instrument, but the organization is active in many aspects of uh, international water policy and disaster risk reduction programs, just to mention a few, IHP, IOC, IHE in Delft, and the post-conflict and post-disaster platform in Paris. Now, to pick out just one of those, what do you do actually? What can you then actually do? How, how to use the, the World Heritage Convention for the purposes mentioned in this statement? How to link water issues to the to this maybe most successful convention of 1972? Can we make use of already existing mechanisms uh, that this convention provides? Let us, if that is the case, insert water issues, water risk, water management and opportunities into world heritage and thereby create maybe a spin-off for other heritage, as is indeed very much the intention of the World Heritage Convention itself. It's not only about world heritage, it's about all heritage. Now, how can you do that? I, I pick out just maybe four uh, points of entry. The State of Conservation Online Information System provides a good basis. That's one. And secondly, the tentative listing and compiling nomination files are also good entry points. For example, risk mitigation should be part of management plans when submitting new nominations for the World Heritage List. Uh, a third one, site management and periodic reporting is, is a good tool um, for existing World Heritage sites. sites. Risk assessments, preventive measures have to be part of a management report particularly, of course, for those uh, World Heritage Sites that are most prone to water risks. And a fourth point, maybe coming back to the first keynote address on, on Wednesday, existing cooperation between UNESCO's World Heritage Center and the World Bank also provide good possibilities. Um, follow up, for example, on the World Bank's most recent report, the Economies of Uniqueness, which is a really good uh, report that came out uh, particularly out of that uh, cooperation, are evident in respect to uh, this Amsterdam Statement recommendations. What more can we do apart from uh, dealing with the taking those existing mechanisms as a good starting point? Well, two points maybe. The, first of all, the synergy between the UNESCO program should be taken more into account. Um, the Netherlands National Commission for UNESCO advocates a cross-sectoral approach, amongst others, in its, in its own work program, but also in its recommendations to UNESCO headquarters. 
And secondly, uh, I think UNESCO, uh, although it recognizes in its programs the importance of heritage for water and vice versa, um, the opportunities and and, cha and, and, uh, uh, and challenges could be more emphasized and brought to the forefront on the international state stage. Uh, for example, in the uh, worldwide fora that are already mentioned in the statement, so at, such as the World uh, Water Forum and the ICOMOS General Assembly 2014 in, in Florence, they are in there, but also, for example, um, at the World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in 2015 in Japan. Uh, where the current Yogo framework of action, which is from 2005 to 2015, will be renegotiated. And this, this framework is actually the first comprehensive agreement for disaster risk reduction, and that follow-up framework would lend itself very well for incorporating the kind of recommendations uh, uh, done in this statement. And then, of course, the international post-2015 uh, fora. Um, which I was very happy, actually, it was a perfect bridge uh, from what Olivier's presentation was mentioning as the uh, culture as the fourth, maybe the fourth pillar of uh, sustainability, is a, is a big debate at the moment on all these discussions and that are in the run up to the post uh, 2015 uh, uh, agenda, uh, when the present millennium development goals, which go on to 2015, uh, co come to an end, not all of them being attained, but a follow-up agenda will be, will be uh, uh, determined. SDGs might be uh, uh, the term that will be used in that follow-up agenda. And uh, important meetings that already took place in that respect, the Hangzhou meeting earlier uh, this year in China, for example, put culture very much in the forefront of the 2015 agenda as well as, for example, in Ju last July, the ministerial uh, ECOSOC meeting uh, did the same. And, and there that offers, for example, also in the upcoming general uh, conference of uh, UNESCO, which takes place every two years, and it takes place actually uh, next November, uh, offers itself as a great opportunity to involve this kind of issues in that 2015 debate, and, and, and in a timely manner. One other one that I want to highlight uh, that offers itself is the General Assembly of the World Heritage Convention itself, which also takes place in Paris in November. And as, and as a matter of fact, ICOMOS has important advisory role in that General Assembly. So ICOMOS International, through the Dutch ICOMOS, ICOMOS International can directly have a say there in that big General Assembly on uh, the World Heritage Convention in November in Paris. And last but not least, uh, the executive board of UNESCO uh, most likely the Netherlands will uh, be on that uh, board as of uh, November, will be elected um, as a country in, in the executive board of uh, UNESCO. And that, of course, offers great opportunities on a more uh, regular, on, on a smaller interval basis, uh, to participate on, uh, in the debates on, on water uh, and heritage and, and linking the two and making the bridge between those two. So then finally, what can a national commission uh, do in all of this, you might, might wonder, from taking a national perspective, in this case, let me take the Netherlands National Commission um, as a network organization, would in particular uh, be in a position to contribute to the recommendation with regard to improving the exchange of information and knowledge, so particularly in the field of, uh, of capacity building. Uh, we have a broad, as a, as a national commission, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking now with that hat, have a broad national and international network of heritage experts, water management professionals, scientists, and people from the industry. With respect to capacity building in particular, very concretely, we work with uh, ICROM, I-C-C-R-O-M, in, 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 in Rome, and we'll try in our projects that we have with them to incorporate some of the outcomes of this conference in the tools that we are developing together with them, such as a first aid course for cultural heritage that we're preparing with them, uh, with them and that we've secured funding for, um, and also an online uh, toolkit for heritage and disaster risk uh, management, which will be the next one in the line. I think also in, uh, I think it was in bullet point three of the, on, the, on the back side here of the statement, uh, the development of water risk maps was mentioned. Well, that's another very good idea, of course, and some initial work has already been done by UNESCO partners. It can make use of UNESCO World Heritage Center and IHE Delft uh, data, and also, also, of course, of the network of UNESCO chairs and UNESCO category two centers, which can provide input into the making those uh, risk maps. And also it should tap into uh, global risk data platforms set up by UNEP, 
and uh, UNSDIR as a multiple agency effort. And these maps, when, when they become available, should be put widely um, uh, accessible on UNESCO.org and UNESCO.nl and, and other such, uh, such platforms that are available digitally to the wider public. <coughs> now, just to conclude, uh, UNESCO can work more intensively with national ICOMIS, ICOMOS committees on creating national fora to bring sectors together by encouraging international exchange of expertise and by encouraging awareness on the relation between water heritage and disaster risk re uh, reduction. On behalf of the Dutch National Commission for UNESCO, I can say that this cooperation has started already. In fact, it started two years ago when we started preparing this, this, uh, this uh, conference. And I look very much forward to further intensifying the relations with ICOMOS Netherlands and all partners involved in this conference and the Am Amsterdam Statement. Thank you very much. Thank you.